Hallelujah. Good morning, champions. Welcome to the assembly of the envoys of God's love. Today is more like a summary because the Holy Spirit says next week is impartation. We've, we began this series on the 2nd of July this year. And today, God is bringing us to the ultimate call of our lives. Say this to, my, to yourself, I am an envoy of God's love. Say it like you believe it. I am an envoy of God's love. I am begotten of love to be love. I am begotten of love to become love. Turn to your, the person closest to you and summon back that our neighbor. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Look around. Say, neighbor. neighbor. Christmas is here. <laughs> Merry Christmas, family. Hallelujah. Yes, we are envoys of God's love. And what a season, what an opportunity to actually step out of our comfort zones and begin to act and begin to live out our ambassadorial duties as God's agent of love in our spheres. You know, when we talk about envoys, it takes a Nigerian citizen to be sent out to represent Nigeria as her envoy or ambassador. You cannot be an Indian and they'll send you out and say you are the Nigerian envoy to the U.S. If you are from, if you are a Korean, you cannot be sent to represent um, the, the, the United States. Today, God is drawing our attention to the ultimate call of our lives, the call to become love. We are begotten of love, not just to live selflessly, not just to think differently, not just to be instrument of love, not just to give hope. These are things we've talked about. Not just to persevere in love, not just to pursue love or do any of those things that God has been taken, taking us through these past months. We are begotten of love, ultimately to become love. That you can say, I am love. Becoming love is what God, God ultimately desires for all of his children. If we believe that God wants to draw us deeper into intimacy with him, then we can safely say like John, of course, First John 4 a tells us that God is love. So we know that since God is love and God wants us to know him, then love wants to be known. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 13. 1 chapter 13 verse 1 to 8 and Matthew 11 28 to 13. In 1 Corinthians 13, it gives, 1 Corinthians 13 simply gives us a lively portrait of Jesus. I said last week that this week we're going to be looking at embracing the person called love. Because at the, at the foundation of everything, love is not what we do. Love is not a thing. It's not an action. It's a person. So if you simply replace the word love with Jesus in these verses, you're going to have something that sounds like this. Keep the scripture there. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not Jesus, I have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains, but have not Jesus, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but have not Jesus, it profits me nothing. Jesus suffers long, as Jesus is patient. Jesus is kind. Jesus does not envy. Jesus does not parade itself. Follow me with the scripture. We're just replacing love with Jesus. Jesus is not puffed up. 
does not behave rudely, does not seek his own, is not provoked. Jesus thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Jesus bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Jesus never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. When you look at that beautiful portrait, you discover that just replacing Jesus, love with Jesus, he fits in to show us that love is a person. You and I cannot become love and manifest as envoys of God's love without embracing the person called love. Embracing ye is, is like embodying, that is containing the person called love as a constituent part of our lives. I've already stated that we know from 1 John 4, 8 that God is love. And this God is revealed, has revealed himself in his son. Hebrews 1, chapter 1 tells us that. Christ is a visible image of the invisible God. Colossians tells us that he is the father's love revealed in a person. The manifest expression of God's love for us. So Jesus is love himself. Only after we have learned to truly embrace and embody Christ can we become visible expressions of his love in our diverse spheres. I said today is more of a summary, but follow me because God is drawing us to something very important. How do we embrace the person called love? Because you can wake up like last week we said and you want to be kind because kindness is beautiful. You want to be, you, you sacrifice your things to give to people because you like the name a philanthropist. You can do any of those things, but if you do not have Jesus, if you do not have love, it's absolutely nothing. So how can we, how can we embrace this person called love? Because it is in, in embracing the person called love that we can become love, which is God's ultimate vision for you and I. Matthew 11, 28 to 30 gives us a deep insight into this. Jesus speaking in that place says, come to me. It all begins with an invitation. Jesus inviting us to come. When you embrace the person called love, when you embrace Jesus Christ, one of the first things I know he does to you is that he opens the eyes of your heart and you begin to know even how best to love yourself. Most of us think we know how to love ourselves. If we were to run a, a, some sort of questionnaire, we'll all raise our hands that we know how to love ourselves. That's how the robber thinks. The arm robber thinks he loves himself. The cocaine addict thinks he loves himself, he values himself. So does the liar, the sex worker, the perpetually anxious, the faithless, idolaters. Just mention anybody you see doing anything on the street tells you he or she is acting out of love, love for himself. The problem though is that their self-love robs their souls of the rest, of rest both here and in eternity. So here is Jesus in Matthew 11 saying, come to me all you who are weary and who carry heavy burdens. We all carry one burden or the other. But in our context, some of us are carrying heavy burdens of anger, Heavy burdens of selfishness, of pride, of arrogance, of impatience, of jealousy, of envy, of resentment, of insolence, of bitterness, of falsehood. Every time you open your mouth, what comes out is lies. Irritability, evil thoughts, unforgiveness, oppressiveness. You just don't know how to love. You know all these things because over these months, the Holy Spirit has either convicted you on one thing or the other. Jesus is saying this morning, come to me. Come with that envy. Come with that jealousy. Come with that anger. Come just as you are. And I will give you rest for your souls. So if you're seated in this assembly today, and you're, or you're listening to me online, but you've never made the all-important decision to come to Jesus, today is that day. Because Jesus is the personification of the love of the Father and he's asking you to come to him. Love is standing at the door of your heart and knocking. His arms are wide open and he's inviting you. Come with the jealousy. Come with that irritability. Come with that resentment. Come with that bitterness. Come into my embrace. 
you come by receiving Jesus. This is the starting point for all men who must function in the high office of becoming God's envoys of love. Jesus is the Father's love revealed in a person. So without you embracing him and becoming one with him, you cannot become, you cannot be sent out without you being a Nigerian. Remember that our illustration. You cannot be sent out to represent Nigeria. Without you becoming one with the one who is love, you cannot be sent out as an envoy of love. The second way we get to embrace love is by taking on his yoke. From that text in Matthew 11, 28 to 30, Jesus saying, come to me all you who are weary, all you who are burdened, and I'll give you rest. The next line says, take my yoke upon you. Yoke is figuratively seen as an emblem of servitude. In our context today, this yoke is the emblem that identifies you and I that we have been fathered by God. Jesus speaking in John 13, 35 says, By this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Not if you have faith. Not if you prophesy. Not if you sell your things and give them to the poor. Not if you speak in tongues. If you love one another. The yoke of God's love affirms that we know God and identifies us as people begotten of him. So after we have come to God, after we have come to Jesus, we need to take on his yoke by yielding to the leadership and the government of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of Jesus within us is the Holy Spirit we received at, at new birth. When we intentionally yield, when we intentionally surrender ourselves to the spirit of love, and allow him lead we will find ourselves not just in a state of rest but also becoming more and more like jesus in our thoughts in our words and actions this is why jesus said my yoke is easy because you will not be the one doing the work you will not be the one striving to love you will not be the one striving to not be angry you will not be the one striving to be generous you will not be the one striving to do anything it will be the holy spirit walking within you there is rest for our souls when we take on the yoke of Jesus. There is rest for our souls when we yield to his spirit. There is rest for our souls. There is rest. The soul is the seat of the human emotion, passion, appetite. There is rest for our souls when we submit to the yoke of his love. But that is a choice only you can make. I can only talk about it. Your pastors and everyone you listen to can only talk about it. You're the only one to decide, will I be burdened by the world or will I be yoked to Jesus? We're still looking at how to become love because that's the ultimate goal of what God has been doing all these months. Not to get us to just think differently. Anybody can do that. Not to get us to start, start living differently. Anybody can attempt that. But to get us ultimately to become love. And we said at the beginning that we cannot become love and manifest love as envoys of love without embracing or embodying the person called love now we have seen that to do that you have to first of all take on the yoke of jesus come to jesus take on his yoke the third thing you must do is still in that matthew 11 it says come to me say learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart in learning from Jesus, we intentionally imitate Jesus in our daily life and work. And in learning from Jesus, the first thing to note is his disposition of love. If you look at that verse again, you will see him saying, Say, for I am humble and lowly in heart. I am gentle and humble in heart. This Jesus speaking of his disposition. Jesus was disposed to love. We cannot become love without imbibing a Christ-like disposition. Each of us, every one of us, have to be willing to come to a place where irrespective of what the world says, irrespective of what our flesh feels, irrespective of what the devil does, we doggedly do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, we value others above ourselves. Not looking to our own interests, but each of us to the interests of others. 
that is the place of being like Jesus. That is the place of being gentle and humble in heart. Because when, when, we, when, we, when we are able to come to that place, then we can truly say that we have, we have been positioned on the pathway to becoming love. While preparing for this, I asked my spirit, so at what point can I truly say that I have become love? And I heard this answer. He said, when you know you have embodied love, when like Paul the apostle, you can truly say, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. This year began in January with a call to be plucked into God and to stay plucked into Christ. It is ending with Jesus inviting us to take on his yoke and yoke ourselves to him for he is love personified. We cannot accept we cannot truly really love acceptably outside of him. And without the emblem of his love, we can neither claim to know God nor be fathered by him. So in case all of this is sounding like poem to you, when the role is called up in Zion, if you did not walk in love in time, there will be neither crown waiting for you nor, neither, nor your name on the book or in the book. When the role is called up, when time is rolled up, when everything is said and done, what will matter will be if you and I walked in love. Not if you prophesied. Not if you healed the sick. Not if you, if you raised the dead. Not if you did any of those gifts because it's already said that those gifts, they will fail, they will cease, they will pass away. What will remain, what will never fail is love. So without love, when the role shall be called up in Zion and men invited to take their crowns, we would not be numbered amongst them. For love in God's perspective is beyond just acting loving or kind. It is becoming love. That God can send you to an environment and know that there is my agent of love. And no matter what the flesh throws at you, no matter what the world throws at you, because these are the oppositions to your love, no matter what the devil does to you, what will come out on the other end will be love. For until you are love, you cannot truly really live love. Every other thing will be action until you have become. If you would accept Jesus' invitation this morning to become love, to become one with him, to come and take on his yoke of love and let him be the one loving people through you. Let him be the one loving God through you. Let him be the one walking through you. Then I invite you to rise this morning as we take our confessions. Say with me, I am begotten of love to become love. I am begotten of love to become love. My heart, my mind, my spirit, my body belong to the Lord. I yield my members as his vessels of love. Daily, I am being transformed to become gentle and humble in heart. I am who God says I am. I walk on this earth as Christ walked. I am the vision of the Father. Nations are drawn to him through me. I am kind because my father is kind. I am patient because my father is patient. I am selfless because my Lord is selfless. I am available to answer my name and to do the will of the father. I surrender my will my desires and my way to live as Jesus lived. I am strengthened by the Spirit of Christ to resist the pressures of this world. I am God's living portal of love. The torrent of God's love flows through me. 
I am God's special instrument of love for my world. I am growing daily in Christ likeness. The Father will be glorified in me. My life is marked by love, selflessness, and compassion. I am dead to lust, dead to pride, and dead to worldliness. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. I am a beacon of God's love to the world. My life is a reflection of the teachings of Jesus. I am an embodiment of God's love and grace. I am living daily by the example of the Son of God. I receive the courage and the grace to live as Jesus lived. And to love and serve as he did. Just raise your hands and begin to make a consecration of yourselves to God this morning. Ask God, I am telling him, I am yours, Lord. My heart is yours. My mind is yours. My spirit is yours. My body is yours. I am yours, oh Lord. I yield my members as your vessels of love. Take me as I am and make me what you see. Transform me, Lord, into your vision. Transform me by your truth. Strengthen me by your power. Strengthen me by your spirit. Change me to become gentle and humble in heart. Declare to him, I am yours, Lord. You are love. I am begotten of love. Make me kind, for you are kind. Make me patient, for you are patient. Make me selfless, for you are selfless. Make me generous, for you are generous. Make me available, Lord, I am available to you. I surrender my will to you. I surrender my desires to you. I surrender my way to you. I surrender my all to you. I am yours, Lord. I am your image and likeness on earth. Let Christ be seen in me. Let Christ be heard in me. Let the torrent of your love flow through me. Let, let my life reflect your love, reveal your love. Make me an envoy of your love to my spirit.